they get in their soul filled up. But they prefer to live in fresh because then they never have to go looking. Feed on both sides of the boat. So if you don't get to see this time, we will feed on the other side. You can all go to one side of the boat. We aren't going to become a glass bottom. I do believe this is one of our female crocodiles, Chase, who lives in this area. And we can actually tell the difference individually between these crocodiles. They are, no two crocodiles are the same. There's no such thing as identical twins in the crocodile world. And that spot pattern on their body is what makes them all individually different. The girls only grow to about three metres in length, where the boys will continue to grow their whole lives. I'll try and put some sunlight on the for you as well. Now this jumping technique we're showing you today is something that crocodiles do naturally from around seven days old. They have this unique ability of being able to push or propel themselves up out of the water just by using their tail. And their tail is exactly half their body length. So uh, got a fair bit of power in there. It's lazy. So she'll lift her head up, drop her tail down, and just using her tail, she'll push herself up out of the water. And you'll see on this high tide all the branches hanging out over the water's edge. And you wonder why crocodiles jump. Come on, Chase. She normally puts in some good jump. <laughs> oh, sorry, that might be my fault, Tony. I'm in reverse. The tide's coming here. I've got to try and get the floor of the boat going with her. Yeah, that's why I'm on this side, just in case, first thing in the morning. <laughs> So this jumping technique they do to retrieve birds, snakes, lizards, bats, goannas, anything that comes down to drink from the water's edge. Do what they naturally do in their own habitat. So she'll tilt her head back. Not required at all. Um, the only thing a crocodile can't digest is uh, yes, in front of the boat. Is this boga coming? Oh, I love it. He's come to say hello. So you do get to know these guys really well and they do. He's one of our second largest dominant males that we interact with out here on the river. He's beautiful. And that's why there's not much point in us overfeeding him because then we lose him. Because he won't like to come back for two or three weeks before he wants another feed. So uh, we would then be defeating our own purpose. I'm talking downstairs here that um, crocodiles actually collect stones during the course of their life and a big guy like this can have up to 16 stones the size of a goose's egg in his stomach and the reason they do this is they use it as a type of ballast so of course when they're sitting and they're all backed up on the water when they just want to drop their back under the water and just keep their head they just put all those stones down towards their tail area and that holds the weight into the water and then when he wants to pop back up to the surface one open you'll always find stones inside that stomach area <laughs> so his eyes are up on top of his head, that gives him binocular vision, so he can see just about all the way around except for directly behind See on Bogart's back there, those scoots on his tail, they're designed to counteract any... ...in the year towards the end of the dry season, and so that's our way of telling him if he's skinny. Look when she gets closer. When Skinny jumps, she jumps right out of the water and she slaps her bottom two feet down onto the water. That's just her jumping style or technique, you know. Put food source out here on the river system. So, uh, go Skinny, there you go. Two back legs under the water. Do uh, get quite attached to them after a while. But what we'll see is that this is how smart these crocs are. Skinny and I love each other, no problem. Sunny, the croc that's coming out past her, because Sunny and I have issues and Sunny doesn't like me. So for some reason, speaking to see if I'm good, she won't know it's me if she can't hear my voice. But no, I don't, even, I don't smile for this one, I can tell you. <laughs> but um, Wendy, the lady in the ticket office, dictate what goes on here, they do, I can assure you. So. And I don't, it's not anything personal. It's not like I did anything to her or ran her over in the boat or we don't have any propellers or anything, but they just did the boat job. When Steve Irwin was alive, he had a crocodile called Agro and we've got one as well. And he couldn't even walk past that pen and that crocodile would go at him. He hated Steve. So like I said, they just have their personal.
little bit monkey do, which you would have passed through coming out to uh, the visitors today. And I've had like four snakes in the last week uh, at home. So, but they're all pythons. And uh, they're beautiful, some beautiful scarlet pythons. She does some good jumps, but when she comes up the river, she zigzags all the way up the river to you normally. So that's where she got her name. You see, she's a nice blonde looking colour. The crocodiles only come in blonde, black and grey. And like I said, that spot pattern is like their DNA or their fingerprint. And uh, that's what makes crocodile products so expensive. The fact that no two are ever the same. And so each handbag and uh, that you're buying is individually different. They're around 80,000 eggs a year they remove from the wild. Yep. And they sell those off to the parks, farms, and that, and that's how they get their stock for the following year. So you control it all here. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be a privately contracted thing, it was about $45 an egg, and there's about 50 to 80 eggs in each nest site. It wasn't a bad little uh, business, but now the government has taken it on, so uh, now it's just an hourly rate. They dangle you from a helicopter the bucket <laughs> and there's no just jumping in there and throwing them into the bucket because if you roll the egg in any way you'll drown the embryo. Oh, let's see if we can see one up here. We're going to cruise on up just a little bit further. There's another nest up here that belongs to Thelma. Oh, that was right. Oh. If only they knew our big six metre male loves to hang right there. This is the end of his. But he, he has about 50 girlfriends. So he goes for missing for about 106 days a year during the breeding season. So uh, She's very dark, Thelma. She's definitely one of our older girls. If you have a look under their eyes, it's probably a bit hard to see, but they actually have two quickly. It's just one way of looking at them that you can aim them. The more predominant those ridges are, the older the crocodile is. So uh, we used to have a crocodile called Crater, who I haven't seen for a little while. And we reckon she was around that 80 year age mark. Sorry for the And what she'll do, what she'll do, and one's an indoor and an in the grass, just as we come across the front of the boat now, and then back in behind there, she'll have a cleared out spot. I don't know how well you can see upstairs. And then the nest is just a big mound of sticks in that. Now, Mum, she's so good, she actually controls the nest temperature. For boys, it needs to be um, between 30 and 31.6 degrees, it's intended for a girl, so uh, not very long. Okay, folks, Connie's downstairs. We do. along in front of the fire and they'll eat all the little insects and animals that escape from the flame. But if the fire dies down, they're pretty cheeky. They'll actually pick up a hot stick, they'll fly off in front of the fire and put in the dead grass and start their own fire. So uh, they're very cheeky. Here we go, out on the other side now. So if you are travelling around, especially, uh, I mean these guys have been banned for being fit. Oh crop, right there, look at that. <laughs> these are, uh, it is illegal to feed any wildlife in Australia so we just ask that while you are travelling around please don't recreate any of the feeding you've seen us do. Imagine that so the birds now just fly in and take the sandwich straight out of your hand so. All right folks what we do need to start making our way back towards the jetty. So they estimate there is now around 100 and uh, 
80 towers, those numbers have come back with their protection since the days of the uh, hunting. So if it's got water in it, folks, then give you a chance to just enjoy the river as we make our way back to the jetty.